so basically in your ca3 as you all know that in your ca3 it will be you have to give a written exam in the form of it will be centralized so in your ca3 the syllabus will be covering your flexible pavement design and rigid pavement design so in the previous classes i have given you a glimpse about the flexible pavement design so based on the syllabus pattern i am just explaining some initial things then we will go to the numerical so here basically your flexible pavement design that i have earlier told so in your flexible pavement design there are the code that is in the 1970 1984 2001 2012 and the latest is 2018 that we are following in our numericals so this is the rc 37 2018 code so basically first of all that what are the differences in between the various codal provisions because whenever a new code is being revised so it is basically some new techniques or some new principles or some new formulations or calculations are made so basically the first code that is rc 37 1970 here the that is the it has in 1967 the first codal provision means to start a new code for the design or it has been initiated so based on the initiation it gives a basic idea about the principles of pavement design like the factors traffic load materials and climate then in 84 it is revised so when it is revised some new guidelines have been implemented so which basically incorporate the concept of california bearing ratio for the subject strength evaluation and with the resilient modulus of materials means before that 1984 the design is based on triaxial test method or a layer of two pavement and in between the two layers a correlation is made so with some factor then later on they have found that there should be some test so based on that test evaluation the pavement design should be made so then in after 84 it is further revised in 2001 so in 2001 a new approach has been initiated because this approach is step by step occurs wherever some contractor or the engineer they feel that based on the previous design considerations there are some flaws or whenever the design they are making that design purpose so because of the material property or because of the higher load calculation evaluation that with that the distresses occurs very early in the form of either rutting or in the form of fatigue so in 2001 a new concept has been implemented that is the concept of mechanistic empirical design method so what we are focusing more on the scientific approach so basically here what is happening in that mechanistic empirical design approaches the axial loads are considered and with that axial load consideration more emphasis is given on the stress calculation deflection calculation and strain evaluation before that only the design is related to the whatever your material part is there and with that material whenever you are designing by using cbr or other parameters then in 2012 with the further progress in the mechanistic empirical design approach like it is intended for the modern software tools a bit of touch has been implemented and that software tool is in the 2018 codal provision with the implementation of sustainable and cost effective pavement design like i have told you in the previous class that i have shown you a comparison of six different charts where based on a single cbr value how you can get a different pavement layer thickness means you are using say cement treated base so in the cement treated base you are using waste materials in the form of rag in the form of slag then you are applying stress absorbing membrane interlayer you are um, applying aggregate interlayer so different layer combinations are emphasized in 2018 code it is the latest code that we are following and in that code mostly the use of iit page is implemented along with that the effective cbr calculation so 2018 rc code is the updated as well as the modernized version which covers maximum calculations or evaluations in that so now what are the basic design principles that we follow means you are designing 
based on the mechanic mechanistic empirical method so here basically all the calculations are based on empirical calculations so here you can see the mechanistic empirical method that i have told it is based on certain theory what is the theory linear elastic layer theory so what is the meaning of linear elastic layer theory what is the meaning of linear elastic layer theory why the term has been mentioned here pavement as a layer you all know that what are the layers of pavement recall them subgrade subbase base and surface floor so whatever type of material you are using in every layer it is being considered as a linear material property there are two types linear and non linear so whenever we are designing based on 2018 code or based on iit pave also that software there is a limitation of the software what is the limitation that that software can only consider linear material properties means if you think in terms of non linearity non linearity means what is the difference in linear and non linear then linear means in a straight line that is different i am talk talking about the material characteristics linear and non linear linear means it is having yes tell same characteristics so basically non linearity means with the effect of certain say temperature or some other variables its property changes just like the best example is the bituminous material whenever temperature varies suppose today is the temperature 60 degree another day temperature is say 50 degree in some day 40 degree so based on the variation in temperature the strength or the behavior of bituminous concrete changes so it is a non linear material type because with respect to temperature the property of bitumen varies why because viscosity changes so it is a type of non linear characteristic then subgrade also act as a non linear how it can act as a non linear because in non linearity there is the consideration of c and phi because whenever suppose there is a rise in water level what is a water percolation occurs so obviously if c and phi value varies based on the water condition or based on some other parameters loading characteristics also so subgrade also acts as a non linear type so whenever you are designing by using some other software say ansys abacus there are other finite element software so then only you can consider or in pavement elzin 5 is used we can consider non linearity otherwise in codal provision as well as with your iit pave software also you have to use linear elastic theory that's why it is called as the term linear elastic theory every layer is considered as linear where only the material property you are considering elastic modulus and poisson's ratio every total design is based on these two parameters and what are the criteria you are calculating stress strain deflection we are checking these three parameters basically so we all know that pavement is a multi layered structure and in that multi layered structure the subgrade that is considered as semi infinite because you don't know the depth or how much extent it can go because there is a embankment also that's why in design consideration it is considered as a semi infinite and here again elastic modulus poisson's ratio and thickness of each layer these are the inputs in the calculation of stress strain and deflection that i have also shown in the previous classes related to the iit pep input parameters you are inputting layer thickness you are inputting the elastic modulus and you are inputting the poisson's ratio <coughs> then the other parameters that you have to consider here that is you are calculating stress strain and deflection but at what point your this calculation is needed so here say a dual wheel load is considered when it is acting so whenever it is acting one thing is that surface deflection you have to measure deflection at the top surface 
and then comes i have told that is the tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer so this is the bituminous layer at the bottom of bituminous layer you have to calculate the tensile strain because that tensile strain when using in the formulation it will give you the fatigue failure parameter then there is a vertical strain on the top of subgrade that will give you the rut depth or rutting criteria parameter there and if you are using ctb or any granular crack layer in that case particularly only you have to calculate tensile strain and stress at the bottom of ctb that is only if you are using ctb it may happen based on the design parameter you are only using bituminous layer sub base base sub base only then you have to only focus on tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer and vertical strain at the top of subgrade but when you are using the cement pitted base layer you have to consider this calculation also tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer vertical strain on the top of subgrade as well as tensile strain at the bottom of ctb or the cement pitted base layer so when you are using ctb your three parameters will come into the picture this is the formulation for calculation of your rutting and similarly another formulation i will show that is for the fatigue calculation so this calculation is valid based on two criteria here you can see 80% reliability and 90% reliability so 90% reliability is used when you are calculating you are considering nh national highway expressway so on that case your 90% reliability formula is used and when you are using some other district road state highways then you can use 80% reliability so that formula is valid in when your rut depth of 20 mm is achieved means the pavement is considered thin or rutting happens at any depth but whenever the rut depth is 20 mm then it is considered as a failure means after application of certain number of wheel passes your pavement fails so that depth is 20 mm that's why <clears throat> whatever you are calculating nr nr is standard axle load that can be served by the pavement before the critical rut depth of 20 mm occurs and epsilon v is the vertical compressive strain at the top of subgrade so by using any software iit pave or any other ep software what is your criteria you apply a load suppose you apply a certain load is applied on the pavement and based on the different layer characteristics you are calculating that load that value say you are calculating vertical compressive strain at the top of subgrade that software will give you at this point what is the vertical strain so you put the value of vertical strain here then you can get the nr nr means your number of cycles or repetitions after which the pavement fails suppose you got a value say 3.2 into 10 to the power 6 so after this much of cycles having 80 kN standard axle load your pavement fail or your 20 mm rut depth occurs so you get an idea that after how much wheel passes or how much load repetitions my pavement may get fail in the criteria of rutting okay so that's why in the design purpose like in the flexible pavement design code in the previous class i have shown you an example that you have got the value of 131 msa i have told you to consider 31 msa in that case but whenever you you are using a higher value more than 50 then you have to redesign how you do the redesign you have to consider certain thickness based on that thickness by using the software you have to calculate this values and based on these values you have to check your load repetition limiting value i will show you in the next slide how you are getting the value similarly the another formula that is being used that is for the fatigue failure criteria similarly here also you are getting the epsilon t value so that is basically the horizontal strain on the bottom of bituminous layer that you are getting so you have to just input here one another parameters are also there that is the your c as well as your mrn so 
C is basically calculated using this formula because whenever you are using this formula that means you have earlier done Marshall mix design. So in the Marshall mix design you will get percentage air void, you will get the value of percentage volume of effective bitumen. So based on the design calculation means only for your this static calculation you require the Marshall mix design results. Because suppose you are designing a road, you require that result also, your mix design results. Because if you don't have this result, then you cannot calculate the fatigue failure. Because fatigue failure is related to the bituminous layer failure. And you are calculating on the bottom of bituminous layer. So fatigue failure, whenever it is occurring, before the critical cracked area of 20% of mode, previous cracking is 20 mm. Cutting value 20 mm, here for fatigue is 20% of the area of the pavement stretch, if it is having cracked, that means fatigue failure has occurred in that section. So, then excellent is the maximum horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer that you are getting from the software and by putting that value in the previous formula, you also similarly get that is the NF, fatigue life of bituminous layer. Previous one, you are getting rutting life of bituminous layer. Here you are calculating fatigue life of bituminous layer. So, these are the layer considerations whenever you are applying on the IIT PEP software. Linear elastic model that I have earlier told. Then fully bonded. All the layers are considered as fully bonded. So, is it possible that all the pavement layers are fully bonded to each other, this layer to this layer or this layer to this layer, is it possible? Why? So there should be certain coefficient of friction because this is a bituminous surface layer. Although you are using tack coat and prime coat, but still the bituminous layer and here is your aggregate layer. So, in between that two different layer characteristics, there is a frictional property. So, that coefficient of friction will occur. So, but here in your software, the all the simplistic calculations are considered. That's why all the layers are fully bonded. Then number of wheels, dual wheel assembly, where the load that is being calculating, that is 20 kN load. Means on a single axle, 20 kN is being applied on a single wheel. That's why the software, you have to input the parameter 20 kN. Then tire pressure 0.56 and 0.8 MPa is for cement treated base layer. And these are the critical mechanistic parameters that I have told. In the bituminous layer tensile strain at the bottom, subgrade compressive strain at the top and cement treated base tensile stress and tensile strain at the bottom of CTB layer. So these are the design assumptions that you have to consider. Then the formula I have also told you in the previous class that that formula you have to apply 365 1 plus r to the power n minus 1 by r into a into d into f where basically n is the cumulative number of standard axles, a is the initial traffic in the year of completion of construction, lane distribution factor, vehicle damage factor, n is the design life and r is the traffic growth rate. So based on the IRC design parameters, you have to check and finally if some considerations are applied that the traffic in the year of completion is estimated to this, you have to calculate the forecasted traffic. And this is the important parameter I have told, lane distribution factor. So in this way, you can remember what is your lane distribution factor. In the IRC code, it is in the sentence form that whenever there is a single carriageway road, you have to consider for a single lane road, the factor is 1, considering traffic on the both directions. For two lane single carriageway, 0 0.50 of the both directions, 0 0.40 for the both directions. But whenever it is a dual carriageway road, you have to consider on each direction traffic. It is for a two lanes on each side, it is 0.75. Here it is, it will be 0.45, not 0.44. For 3, it is 0.60. And for a 4 lane, 
carriage weight divided carriage weight is 0.45 the factor is so this is the important part because that will not be provided in the question so you have to remember this factor then the process where you are using effective cpr that i have also explained in the previous classes that using iit prep software you have to calculate based on the cpr value you have to calculate effective cpr by considering the deflection of the surface deflection you can calculate that calculate the process so you get or in the question it may be given that what is the cpr value mostly it will be given because in the for your exam purpose that as there is no provision of using software so such questions is not required but for your uh, consideration or your calculation part you can use this then how you are designing based on the process of the modern or the latest iit 37 code first is your selected trial composition that if your mix is or you are traffic calculation you are getting is more than 50 ms so you have to assume a certain trial composition means bc layer of this much thickness dbm of this much thickness sub base base of such certain thickness then based on the bituminous mix design you have to evaluate or from the code you can consider different mr values the resilient modulus values so first is your thickness t then comes is your mr value resilient modulus of every layer or that is called as the elastic modulus there as well as you have to consider the poisson's ratio also then you select your layer thickness and structural analysis is conducted using the iit prep software so what does it calculate the stresses strain and deflection then you have to check for the allowable strain and allowable that rutting strain and fatigue strain if it is within the safe limit or not if it is safe then that means your design thickness is okay so if it is more than your safe limit calculation then you have to redesign your thickness or you have to change the material property then finally that means you are doing certain iteration as you have to change that means you are you are iterating trial and error in just way you are changing the thickness or you are changing the material property and checking that whether your design is okay or not so this is the question that is being you have solved in the previous class so where you are based on the question you have got the value of 131 msa okay so open your copies if you have calculated in the previous class you can get so in the last i have told there is one term mentioned marshall mix design on the bituminous mix to be used in the bottom of bituminous layer for an air void content of 3% and effective bitumen content of 11.5% so can you recall what is the significance of this value where i have mentioned these two terms air void and effective bitumen content it is not in the copy it is when i am showing you the slides when i am talking about the fatigue like calculation there you have got a formula c equal to 10 to the power m so i have told there you require marshall mix design parameters so that's why in the question it is mentioned that marshall mix design carried out on the bituminous mix to be used in the bottom of dbm layer 3% and effective volume of 11.5% so that parameter is needed for calculating the factor c okay because that will give you the fatigue strain so what is your first step to evaluate the lane distribution factor from the code then based on the lane distribution factor it is mentioned that you have to assume 50% in each direction that's why you have considered 2500 cvpd commercial vehicles per day vehicle damage factor of 5.2 is given then you have to calculate the n that is the cumulative standard axles there so you have got the value of 131 msa so your effective cbr is given 7% so you have to consider 
calculate the effective Brazilian modulus of subgrade by using that formula 17.6 into CBR to the power 0.64. You are getting the value of 62 NPA because this value is required when you are designing on IIT pay. Say for your this much layer, it is required 62 NPA. Then the design traffic is more than 50% MSA. You have to give certain parameters means traffic is very much high. That means you have to use better quality or higher grade of bitumen there. So your first trial thickness is this much. Bituminous concrete of 40 mm, dense bituminous macadam in two layers. 70 mm, dense bituminous macadam 80 mm, WMM layer 250 mm, granular subbase 230 mm. Okay, that is your trial thickness based on the because in your code also you can see it is up to 50 MSA. So, whatever thickness is given there, you have to assume a higher value based on that. So, your traffic count is 131 MSA. So, you have to assume certain values and what is the other parameter? Thickness, I have told, that is required in IIT phase. Next is elastic modulus and poison ratio. That is important. So, for the subgrade CBR of 7%, you can calculate by using that formula. Effective CBR 7%, 62 MPA. Here you can put the value in the software. Then the aggregate layer. WMM and WBM, these are combined. So, when these are combined, so these are calculated by using another formula that is 0.2 into H, that is the thickness, to the power 0.45 into elastic modulus of subgrade, that is 62 MPA. So, when you are using this formula, you have to apply that 62 MPA value and if you apply this formula, you get the value of your E granular, that is a combined value of GSB as well as your WMM layer. Means, subbase or base ko humne combined kya combine karke ek aggregate layer mein calculate kiya. So, the combination layer, it gives you a value of 200 MPA. Issa matlab hai, whenever you are inputting on the software, you have to combine these two thickness. 250 plus 230, 480. 480 is your input parameter as thickness. And this is the combined modulus value, 200 MPA. Then, for the bituminous layer, 3000 MPA is the given data in the code as well as 0.35 is the poison ratio that is assumed. So, these are the input parameters for your software. And as you input the parameters like here you can see the bituminous layer total thickness considering BC, DBM1, DBM2 is 190 mm. Okay. Its modulus is 3000 MPA that you have considered from the code. Poison ratio 0.35. And your the load that is acting there 20 kN, jo pehle bataya tha. then your WMM layer is 250, GSB 230. So combining we are giving it as a aggregate layer. And subgrade ka thickness required nahi hai because in the code it will consider as a semi-finite. So here you can in the later on I will show you the slide. So subgrade ka bhi mujhe pata chal gaya, 62 MPA, calculate karke, poison ratio and effective CPR. So, these are my input parameters and these are my point of calculation. Bottom of bituminous layer, ek jaga hoga just on the bottom of load. Then, another point is at a distance of one tire and another tire, the mid value. Okay? Two tires are there, say two truck tires are there. So, in between the one tire to another tire, there is a gap. So, in between that gap, the mid value you are considering. So, at the bottom of, just at the bottom of the tire and at a distance of half of the, in between the two distance you are calculating means wherever you are getting the maximum value that you have to evaluate. So, many times it may not happen just like at the bottom of tire you are getting the maximum deflection or maximum stress strain value. For a side distance bhi ho sakta hai. Then, I have told we are considering 90% reliability for national highway, expressway. So, based on that calculation, rutting life and fatigue life calculation, what is there? 
we are applying that here in the fatigue model we are getting back calculating 131 msi is your value that you have got tumhe kitna traffic ke liye payment design karna hai ye pata chal chuka hai that you know correct 131 msi is your calculating value so whenever is your 131 msi you got so that means in the formula nf tumhe pata hai कि कितना लोड के बाद पेमेंट फेल कर सकता है बिकॉज यू हैव टू डिजाइन फॉर दैट 131 थर्टी वन एम एस ए ठीक है वन थर्टी वन एम एस ए के लिए मुझे डिजाइन करना है दैट मीन्स फॉर वन थर्टी वन एम एस ए इज माई अल्टीमेट उतना लोड लेना चाहिए मेरा पेमेंट दैट इज माई टारगेट माई पेमेंट शुड सस्टेन द लोड ऑफ वन थर्टी वन एम एस ए सो उस वन थर्टी वन एम एस ए को अगर पेमेंट लोड ले सो वॉट विल बी माई If silent t, horizontal strain कितना होना चाहिए ठीक है वो बैक कैलकुलेट करेंगे सो माई हॉराइजेंटल स्ट्रेन इज वन फिफ्टी योर माइक्रो स्ट्रेन सो वेन एवर यू आर गेटिंग दैट वैल्यू एंड अगेन रटिंग पैरामीटर के लिए भी अगर चेक करेंगे तो बेस्ड ऑन द सेम पैरामीटर वन थर्टी वन इंटू ट्वेंटी टू दावर सिक्स वॉट विल बी माई इफ साइलेंट बी वर्टिकल स्ट्रेन वॉट विल बी माई वर्टिकल स्ट्रेन अगर मेरा वर्टिकल स्ट्रेन इतना होता है so that means my pavement will tends to fail 131 msi tak wo pahunch jayega so iska matlab kya hai 301 and 150 for fatigue model ye dono mera limiting value hai if after calculating from the software if my value comes more than the limiting value that means my pavement has failed already jo pavement thickness maine assume kiya उसमें वो फेल हो चुका है सो इफ द वैल्यूज आर कमिंग लेसर देन दिस लिमिटिंग वैल्यू दैट मीन्स माई थिकनेस इज ओके दिस पेमेंट थिकनेस कैन सस्टेन 131 थर्टी वन एम एस ए ट्राफिक विच इज माई टारगेट ओके सो लेट्स चेक ये बैक कैलकुलेट करके निकला यू आर सीन द सर्टेन वैल्यूज वॉट आर देयर ओनली दैट एफ साइलेंट टी इज द एक्स एंड हेयर एफ साइलेंट एफ साइलेंट डी एंड हेयर एफ साइलेंट बी these are the parameters that you are calculating so here this is the page for the iit pave where you are inputting the value elastic modulus of 3000 elastic modulus 2000 elastic modulus of 62 three different layers are there and poisson ratio is given and thickness of 190 for bituminous layer 4 ac for aggregate layer for subgrade there is no thickness because it is semi infinite so whenever it is a semi infinite no thickness automatically the parameters are set by the software in such a way that no thickness is required in this case so then you are applying the wheel load of 20 kN you are having four different points of analysis that is in the previous diagram i have shown two points are just on the bottom of the tire and two points are on the half of the distance between the two tire gap so four points are there like here you can see the radial distance zero means zero means just at the bottom of tire 155 means it is at a distance of from zero to that point that you are evaluating and another point is zero and here it is 155 so four different points are there you have to submit it the input parameters after submitting you have to put the press, press the button there is another button will appear that is run means you have to run the program so it will give you the result in this form different tabulation data are there here you can see that is displacement z it will give you the displacement in millimeter it will give you the epsilon z means vertical strain epsilon t tensile strain so these parameters it will give based on the different layers that you are evaluating so in that case based on the layer of 190 mm jahan pe tumhe chahiye jis jit pe calculation karna you are getting the value of 145.145 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm that means one around 146 micro strain then for your subgrade you are getting 244 micro strain so these are the values that software is giving you based on the calculation model because this formulas are directly inputted in the software what is the allowable strain you got 150 micro strain and for your 
vertical compressive strain you got 301 so these two values whenever you are comparing this these are on the safer side that means your design is safe agar ye values inse zyada hota more than 150 or more than 301 that means your design is unsafe so you have to redesign so whenever you are redesigning what will you do decrease the thickness or increase the thickness increase the thickness because that depth is not enough to sustain that load so that means you will increase the thickness say 10 mm or 5 mm and again do the same calculations in the software so then you can check your design is appropriate or not or if you want to make your thickness constant you can apply change the modulus value means the modulus of bituminous layer so if you are changing that means in your quality control you have to make sure that that much of strength is there in your pavement say 3000 if you are considering 3500 so that means you have to use the bitumen in such a way or that grade of bitumen that it will give you this much of strength but mostly the thickness are being altered in most of the cases so one numerical is there that is given in your that is the tutorial set so solve this numerical so what is given in the question design the thickness of a flexible pavement with pavement composition of for a four lane single carriage way with the following data okay so first is four lane single carriage way so you have to recall what is the lane distribution factor for four lane single carriage way road then initial traffic in the year of completion of construction one thing is clear that single carriage way is given that means it is sum of both direction so you will not have to half this value 600 600 will be intact value half karne ki zarurat nahi hai then traffic growth rate traffic growth rate is 7% design life 20 years your design cbr value 5% so that is not required now for the calculation then vehicle damage factor 3.5 so you have to calculate the first the n value so what is the ldf for this point 4 so your r will be 0.07 a is 600 b is 0.4 and vehicle damage factor is 3.5 
so you get you will get a value similar to that so cross check the values only you have to remember that factor is 0.4 for a four lane single carriage way so you will get a value of 12.56 msa median standard axle okay so if we break the value it will be like So after calculating the value, you will get a similar type of graph in the question paper. You have noted down this part. So here you can see. This chart is for catalog for pavement with bituminous surface coat with granular base and sub base effective CBR 5%. So that is given in the question 5%. So there are different MSA values 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So based on different MSA, different thicknesses are there. So you have to interpolate the value in between 10 and 20. So either you consider it as a 12.5 or 13 or 12. in your round about because <clears throat> here you can see that 200 mm is a constant value that means when you are applying for the sub base your trial thickness is 200 mm this part you have noted down everyone has noted down this part So, what is the surface coat thickness? What will be the surface coat thickness based on 12.5 say MSA? Surface coat. It will be 40 mm because 40 mm is constant for 10 and 20. So, no interpolation is required. Then comes the base coat. Or binder coat. So in that case, you have to calculate the interpolation for the 80 and 105 values. So calculate and tell what will be the value for 10 MSA. It is 80 for 20 MSA. It is 105. You have to calculate for 12.5 MSA. So interpolate and whatever value you got, that will be the value for base coat thickness. Calculate and tell the value. Then is your WMM. So here also no interpolation is required. So it will be 250 mm thickness. Then is your GSB. Here also it is 200 mm, as no interpolation is required. So what is the thickness for this much layer? Twelve point five is your MSA. Calculate and tell what is the value. You have a calculator, so you can calculate. Twelve 
इंटरप्रोटेशन करना है टेन के लिए अगर एट्टी सिक्स है ट्वेंटी के लिए वन हंड्रेड फाइव तो वाट विल बी द इंटरपोलेशन वैल्यू फॉर ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव दैट इंटरपोलेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर फ्लेक्सीबल पेमेंट डिजाइन सो यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस वॉट इज द वैल्यू एट्टी सिक्स सो एट्टी सिक्स इज द बेस्ट कोर्स वैल्यू सो दिस इज योर फाइनल आउटपुट so after getting the value you have to write in this manner surface force 40 mm base force 86 wmm 250 and gsb 20 mm 200 mm okay so this is the way you have to calculate the pavement design thickness so whatever values will be given in the question that is based on within the limit of 50 mm okay so if it is more than 50 mm the value is provided then probably rc 37 2012 codal provision may be given jisme charge alag hoga up to 150 ms tak rahega bas mainly you have to know how to calculate the n value and how to interpolate based on the charge ye charge nahi bhi reh sakta hai us chart mein 150 tak ms tak value raha it may happen because it is for the 2012 code so agar code 2018 का दिया हुआ है तुम्हारा वैल्यू 50 एम से ज्यादा आ रहा है सो देन यू कैन नॉट कैलकुलेट विदाउट यूजिंग आई आई टी पे ओके सो आई थिंक दैट विल नॉट बी प्रोवाइडेड इन दिस वे वन अनदर न्यूमेरिकल इज देयर गो थ्रू इट इन दैट न्यूमेरिकल यू डोंट हैव टू कैलकुलेट थिकनेस बिकॉज मेनी टाइम्स फाइव मार्क्स क्वेश्चन में कम so after reading out the question directly trying to solve what is the thickness don't do that first read out what is the unknown here determine the design traffic means here you have to just calculate n you don't have to design that layer thickness 360 using that formula 365 a 1 plus r to the power n minus 1 by r a into d into f using that formulation you have to calculate the design traffic so what is the change here four lane divided carriageway four lane divided carriageway having traffic so it is one thing recalled by the sentence because that sentence changes the meaning of the question it is not four lane carriageway on divided on each side it is four lane divided carriageway if you go through the statement of the codal provision it is different so that means it is a four lane with a divided carriageway that means two lane on each side so for this the factor is 0.75 considering traffic in each direction okay so first what is given there traffic as per last count is 2000 cv per day sum of both direction time of construction is 4 years so what is there first you have to calculate that p in terms of that formula that x is your 4 years and r is your traffic growth rate in terms of 6% and a is your what is mentioned there 2000 cvpd sum of both direction so you have to consider sum in each direction so first calculate by 2000 then you can half it with that value So your two five two four is the value of A.
then your vehicle damage factor is 4.2 lane distribution factor 0.75 6% is given so whenever you are calculating the a so that means you have to use half that means in each direction so your final traffic will be 2524 by 2 1262 So now you put the parameters in the formula that 365 formula I have told, and calculate and tell what is the value. First, we have forecasted the traffic for four years because four years is the year of completion of construction time. So after forecasting, our traffic comes to five to four. And based on the criteria, we have to consider whenever it is a divided carriageway, half of the traffic. So for the two five two four, half is one two six two, and we are applying that formula point seven five. So and lane distribution factor is four point two already given. So what is the value of n there? I think this will be the value. You check once. Did you recall the formula, or I will write again three sixty five. 